Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and wait a second, have we not seen this before? Well, yeah, we kind of have. So, there was a miscommunication with the PR company, who neglected to tell me it was not okay to show the campaign mode. So, they said, well, you can just take down part one and leave part two up. And my response to that is, well, no, because it lacks the context, so part two effectively becomes useless and crappy. So, my response to that is, well, let's just make another one then, focused on Swarm and Conquest. We'll see whether or not this actually turns out to be a little bit better. And, of course, the advantage of that is that rather than doing first impressions content right here, I can go in here with having a little bit more knowledge about the way that the game works and hopefully give you a little bit more information. So, once once again, WTF is Section 8 Prejudice Redux. This is the sequel to Section 8 from the developer Timegate, and this is being self-published. This is a digital distribution title only, coming out on PC as well as consoles, and it is going to cost $15. Now, for an Unreal 3 engine, that is very, very unusual. It's an Unreal 3 game, so it's fairly high fidelity. It looks pretty good. It's certainly competitive with a lot of stuff on the market. Not the best-looking game ever, but by no means the worst. And a $15 price point for something with a fully-fledged campaign, admittedly one that I found to be fairly generic when I tried it, plus Swarm and Conquest modes, does seem like the kind of game that I would be interested in playing. The main meat of the game is in the multiplayer. The Swarm mode is a four-player co-op versus increasingly hard waves of enemies, and the Conquest mode is a full 32-player battle over various objectives, and it includes some rather nifty and innovative features. So without further ado, we're going to go into Swarm. I will demonstrate most of the combat here, and then in Conquest, I can demonstrate things like the dynamic combat missions, although they'll probably pop up at some point within Swarm as well, and they're one of the most intriguing features of this particular title. So, without further ado, we'll get it kicked off right here. Now, I'm happy to say that it does have the ability to turn mouse smoothing off, so it's not a bad console port or anything like that. Seems to work pretty well, and it has full keybinding customization, and all the things that you would hopefully expect from a PC title. Admittedly, I'd like to see a few more graphics options. That's something that perhaps will be available in the full version. This is a preview build, so it's not necessarily reflective of the final product, or indeed representative that said, bear in mind, folks, that the Unreal 3 engine is extremely customizable. So, as far as I'm concerned, any game that limits the amount of customization that you can put into an Unreal 3 game is a silly game and shouldn't work that way. Okay, let's go and have a look and see what we can find. We are not doing the campaign tutorial. We are doing this for players against a increasing number of waves. We will not have friendly fire on. This game is hard enough as it is, as I discovered, even on medium difficulty. The bots are rather brutal. All right, there is one map available in this particular preview build, and we're going to be deploying on it right here, the Solar Array on Eden, and I've got three AI partners to help me out. Now, first thing to have a look at, I suppose, would be the loadouts. There are six default loadouts, but there's a lot of customizability here. So if we have a look at Assault, for instance, then click Loadouts, we can look and see what exactly is available. So these are the default setups. There you go, you can see all of those right there. However, there's more customization than you might think here. Firstly, you've got seven weapon types, which does seem like a unreasonably small number, but they do all fulfill specific roles, and it's not just a gun. For instance, there are variations on it, as you can see right here. So I could customize this gun to do a variety of things. Now, each of these guns, I believe, has four different customizable modes. And in the case of the assault rifle, what you've got here is a burst fire modification. You can also set up an automation modification, which selects rounds depending on what distance you are away from the enemy. And distance is a very big factor in Section 8. Taking stuff out at a distance is quite difficult. The shields tend to absorb an awful lot of it. There's a fairly large damage fall-off, but some weapons are very much more effective at it than others. You can change your round type to make yourself more effective. Like, for instance, I could take rail rounds right here to give myself extra rounds or extra distance indeed, or I could look into something like slug rounds, which do high armor damage but low shield damage, burst fire modification, which fires rail rounds, and that's increased accuracy, but obviously you can't put out quite as much damage because you're not firing as quickly. An interesting setup. Go for automation for the time being. Pistol is a very nice weapon, and you also have customizability here. Concussion rounds right here. These are very nice, actually. Extended mag round, slug rounds. We're going to go for concussion rounds, I think, on the pistol. And we'll stick with the assault rifle and the pistol for the time being. I'll show you the other weapons as we go along. Equipment-wise, there is a wide, wide variety of things you can get. Beacons deploy some area of effect debuffs, as well as a sensor beacon right there. Very, very handy to have. Extremely useful. I'd recommend getting quite a few of those. 
Detonation packs, three kinds of those. Concussion, Crash, and Proximity. Yes, Proximity, very, very nice indeed. They are basically mines. Crash pack, very good for blowing up structures and vehicles. And Concussion pack, good for doing high shield damage and slowing targets. That's pretty much a crowd control kind of thing. Three types of grenades, Fuse Grenade, Frag Grenade, and Napalm Grenade. There we go. We we might go for napalm grenade because, hey, it's napalm. There are three kinds of knives, folks. Bear this in mind. There you go. Electro knife, serrated knife, and siphon knife. All of these are very cool indeed. The serrated knife is extremely high damage. Very, very brutal indeed. Now, what other equipment have we got? Three kinds of mortars, crash mortar, napalm, and riot mortars, and we also have a repair tool and a siphon tool. Some of you might be thinking that this is a little bit like tribes. It does have some tribes-like elements, although it definitely doesn't play like it. It's nowhere near as quick, for instance. Tribes was very, very fast with you moving around and the skiing and the use of the jetpacks. Jetpacks are in this game, but they are not quite as effective. Now, I think we'll stick with the napalm grenades and the serrated knife right now. Three armor types. These all do the same thing right now. I don't know if this is going to be in the full game. I don't know how many of these will be unlockable. As far as I can tell, this is pretty much just for the sake of customizing your appearance. And now here's the really meaty stuff, the upgrades. You have a lot of different modules here that will allow you to upgrade pretty much everything you have. So these modules are interesting because some of them are very much small upgrades. So for instance, this one, yeah? Tungsten coating gives me extra bullet damage, and it has no downside. However, if you look at this, Anvil Jacketing, it gives much more bullet damage, but it really hits your recoil dampening and your accuracy very hard indeed. Although I can certainly see a situation where you might want to use something like this with perhaps a heavy shotgun build where you're trying to take people down very quickly. There are similar setups for armor as well. Composite plating is a flat armor increase, but then you've got reactive plating, which... It gives less armor, but it gives you turret resistance and AA resistance. So, in theory, if you've got enough of this, you can actually dive down through the anti-air fire. Now, you might not know what I'm talking about there. I'll show it to you in a few short moments' time, and that'll demonstrate what I'm talking about in terms of AA. So you might think, well, anti-air, why does that matter? Well, that's a fairly unique feature of the Section 8 games, and you'll find out momentarily. Explosive resistance, fire resistance, and extra armor there as well. This is a heavy alloy plate. It gives you huge amounts of armor, but it really does ruin your running speed speed there, but you can get almost 50% extra armor from that. Shield generation, stealth shielding, so you get a little bit extra shield from there, but you get more lock-on resistance. Lock-on is also a feature in this game, I'll show you how it works shortly. Energized weave, this is very nice indeed. This will allow you to run at a very high speed and smash through people. And there's a repair field here as well, which, this is awesome armor regeneration and of course it requires you to be within range of repairs but you can do an awful lot with that so like i said before huge amount of customizability here you can do all sorts of things so for the time being what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some in gyro stabilizer okay, i'm going to take a full six in that and i think we might also look into something that will make me a little bit more durable i tried going in without armor modifications last time and i got absolutely brutalized so uh, I could go for some heavy armor plating, honestly. It'll ruin my jetpack, though. I'd, I'd prefer maybe to have something else. Mm. Energized weave seems pretty good. Give myself some upgrades, give myself some extra shield capacity. And then maybe two more in shield to take it up to 22% extra. And we might take just a little bit of reactive plating as well. There you go. So little bit of customization. Obviously, you've got an awful lot of flexibility there as to what you want to do. Uh, I think I'm fairly happy with this custom loadout. So, you might be wondering what this, all this AA stuff is all about. Well, you get to drop into battle from orbit, which is a very cool feature, and I'll show you exactly how it works right now. Here we go. You do not spawn. You uh, go in from orbit, and there is a reason for that. You can drop pretty much anywhere on the battlefield, but there are anti-air turrets that tend to cover areas on the battlefield, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. Now, you can even choose when to actually deploy your brakes, and that is also a tactical decision. If you go down very fast, that's very cool, and you can land on people, but it also gives you a stagger, so you won't be able to recover quite as quickly. If you break too early, of course, you will be able to land and get on the ground almost instantly ready to fight, but there is a possibility that you'll get shot, so it's a little bit risky. On the larger conquest maps, there are anti-air turrets that will ensure that you can't really drop into them, but you can make sure that you're geared up correctly to have AA resistance, so you can drop into areas where other people would otherwise not be able to do so. Right, guns-wise, assault rifle. 
futuristic assault rifle doesn't make a huge amount of noise i think that it could perhaps have a little bit more in terms of its fidelity it could be a louder meteor rifle that's the problem with futuristic weapons they tend to do that however the pistol not so much of a problem with that no and this is a concussion pistol now what i like about this is it actually makes a different sound it's a concussion pistol and the concussion rounds sound like this but the normal pistol rounds sound very much different. So I like the fact that they've put in a little bit of flexibility there. It also will give you an indication of what your opponent is actually firing at you. Now, jetpack-wise, there you go. You've got your bar in the right-hand corner up at the top. And also you have what's called overdrive. And overdrive, if you hold down shift button, you'll sprint for a few seconds and then you'll activate overdrive, which will put you into third-person mode. There we go. Indeed. However, the cool thing about Overdrive is that you can also charge through people. You'll even get an achievement for it called I'm the Juggernaut, and you will smash people out of the way. You can spec in order to make your Overdrive do loads more damage if you want to charge into the middle of them. Maybe if you've got a heavy shotgun build, for instance, that might be something you're interested in doing. Grab a bunch of extra power for Overdrive, then charge into people, do massive damage in a group, and then use your shotgun to finish people off. Equipment-wise, we have our napalm grenades right here. And we also have a serrated knife. This has to be... You can't instantly go to this. It's not like Call of Duty. You've got to select it. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. Which is cool because knife use in Call of Duty is a little bit silly. There's an awful lot of it being done. Now, on most of these maps, you also have supply points whereby you can get more ammunition. You can also swap your equip... You can swap some equipment around, if I recall correctly. And you can also heal yourself. So, that's very cool. Now, that's pretty much it. And this is the swarm mode, so we're going to be defending against these guys. We've got some very threatening-looking black armored troopers here, ready to help me out. So, we're going to hack this and get started. You're supposed to try and hold this for 15 minutes. My record so far is to get it down to six. It's not easy, folks. It really, really isn't. Now, as you achieve these objectives, you also get cash, which can be spent to get deployables, as well as vehicles from orbit. Okay. Enemy units, folks. Enemy units. There we go. So I'll take these guys out. Now, I do have, I think, the automatic selection on this, if I recall correctly. So I do a fair amount of damage with it. Mow them down fairly easily. These basic infantry are not all that tough, but they do send more dangerous guys as they go along and deploy vehicles and all sorts of nasty stuff. So you do want to watch out for that. There we go. Take him out there. Now, taking out the shields, you do. Th these are these enemies are a little bit bullet spongy. Not as much as they were in the first game. Some people had a lot of complaints about that. Although some people really liked the amount of damage you could take. Damage has been lessened in this version, as far as I can tell. So they've made it a little bit more arcadey, but there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. There you go. Fire those concussive rounds. Concussive rounds are nice because, of course, they slow the enemy down, make them a little bit easier to hit. Now, bear in mind that you can also use this lock-on capability, if I can find someone to shoot at it. There it is, there we go. Now, you have a very, very limited lock-on, which drains your energy incredibly fast. But, it is nice, because of course it allows you to lock on and automatically fire. You probably won't kill the target with it, but it's a nice feature to have nonetheless. And if someone is going at a very high speed, perhaps flying through the air, then it makes it a lot easier to actually hit them with. However, running directly into the fire of the enemy will get you killed incredibly fast, so you do want to watch out for that. Now we want to respawn and get down on the ground as quickly as possible before we lose that central point right there. Down we go, down we go. Burn into battle is what they called this. That was the original marketing term they used on the original game, which it sold fairly well. I mean, it, it wasn't a blockbuster or anything, but it obviously did well enough for them to do a sequel, so you can't really complain there. there go, bring one down. Come on. Yep, let's get in cover right now. The gunplay in this game is really solid. I actually enjoy it an awful lot. It feels really, really good. It's really slick. And that is rather important for a game like this. I think, you know, perhaps there is a risk, certainly with a game with this price point, that it will be a knockoff console port. This is evidently not that. I actually did an interview with these guys a while ago where they said, no, it definitely won't be a console port. We're going to be very, very, very careful about how we do our PC version. And it looks like they have kept that promise, which I'm... Very happy about it. indeed. Will you stop with the shooting and this? Ah, I, I'm in a bad position right now. The lieutenant got me. Doing pretty well on the cash front, though. Once I get to $100, I'll be able to summon in one of the Ares Assault Mechs so I can show you one of the vehicles there. There's also a Spectre Jet Bike, and there's a four-man tank, which cannot be summoned on this, but it's very, very expensive. 
Yeah, let's get down there really, really quickly. Onto the top of it. Get ready to go now. I need to get my knife out because that's going to be really effective in here. Oh my god, so many enemies. Stabby, stabby. Now, there is a fatality move. Unfortunately, if you actually do that and you then get shot while doing it, it becomes pretty much useless. I'm fairly sure I turned that off in the options for automatic, but you have to hold down F for an automatic fatality. I don't know. It seems to be doing that an awful lot, and I don't like that. Let's not do that. We're not a fan of that at all. Oh, God. I'm going to lose this CC, and that might actually lose us the game if we're not careful. Get some grenades in there. Set on fire. That's a lot of captains. That's a lot of dudes. Come on. Ah, Have we lost it? Have we lost it? We might have lost it, you know. Oh, thank God. Right, okay. I'm going to switch out to another weapon now. I'll show you what's available. We've got a lot of close combat going on right here, so I'm thinking. Get ourselves a shotgun. Sounds like a good idea. Shotguns. Right, there are also four for this as well. Average damage for all targets. Concussion rounds for that. Incendiary rounds. High armor damage, low shield damage. And the riot mod. More projectiles. Much, much wider buckshot spread. You've got to get a lot closer for that to be good, and we're going to go for that one. And we might swap out the pistol as well, get something else. Pulse cannon, I found, is very, very nice. Good area of effect, and of course, you can do EMP rounds to do very high shield damage. There's also a burst fire mode. Pulse rounds, and the riot mod for that one as well. I think we're going to grab some EMP rounds for that. There we go. Feeling good about that. And I think my upgrades are solid, so let's drop in and hope that my AI partners have managed to hold the fort while I'm gone. Oh dear, maybe not. I love this. I mean, <laughs> spawning never gets old when you come in from the goddamn sky, as far as I'm concerned. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. That's a grenade. That's not my knife. That's not my knife. Stop believing it's Call of Duty Total Biscuit. Oh, so many enemies. Oh, well, I killed someone with an napalm grenade, so that wasn't too bad. And we have $100 as well, which means I can deploy that Ares Assault Mech when I can stop myself from dying for more than one second. Down we go. Where I stop, nobody knows. I think I'll break a little bit earlier. Hopefully give myself some more response time. Hopefully not get shot in the process. And we lose. There you go. Never mind. Never mind. Well... That's pretty much how Swarm works anyway. There are also dynamic combat missions that will happen in Swarm. But, as it turns out, we didn't manage to survive long enough to show you that. So, I'll show you them in Conquest instead. Which is the really meaty mode of Section 8 Prejudice. So, okay. On we go. Conquest it is. Offline game for that one. Thank you very much. And, yeah. Yeah. We're going to have 32 players because, hey, that's the maximum. It's on dedicated servers on the PC as well. And I'm going to perhaps increase the victory points. I think you can actually have as many as you want. As far as I can tell. Oh, there you go. It's 1 in 10,000. It's cool. If I wanted 9,001, for instance, I could have 9,001. We're going to go for 2,007 because it feels good. Let's go. There we go. 2,007 victory points. And there's also a regulation time. If it goes on for too long, you'll go into overtime mode and you'll gain additional points for stuff. Okay. Let's rock and roll, folks. Let's rock and roll. Now, this map is a lot larger. It customizes depending on the size of the teams, just like Battlefield 2 did. And these areas right here are within range of anti-air turrets, so they're kind of difficult to drop into. But if you have the right build, I think you can do it, especially if you break very, very late when you come in on the burn-in. Shotgun and pulse cannon is what I have for the time being, which seems to be reasonable, so we're going to go for that straight away. And I'll deploy close to one of my squad mates. You can also spawn directly on one of your squad mates. It will lock on and drop you down where you want to go. Right. Down we go. Break a little bit early. And, of course, thanks to the jetpack, you can go pretty much anywhere. It just gives you an awful lot of options, so I'm fairly happy about that. Now, the pulse cannon. Nice weapon if you want to nail people in terms of their shield generators. The buckshot or riot shotgun that I have right here is not all that effective at long range, but extremely effective otherwise. Okay, let's get some overdrive going. I'd love to knock somebody over with this, actually, so I can show you exactly what it does. But it looks like everyone's pretty much dead. We have this area held now. It is about hacking control points, making sure that you can hold particular areas. And that's what earns you a lot of your victory points, although not all of them, bear that in mind. There's, there are other things that you need to bear in mind. Come on, die, die, thank you very much. And kind of like Call of Duty and things like that, there are feats which will gain you experience points and things like that. Now, I can deploy something if I want here. I've earned enough to deploy a sensor tower, but we're not going to do that right now. I'm going to save up for a vehicle later on so that I can show you that. 
Hit him with a pulse cannon, bring his shields down, and then shoot him in the head. Good combination of that. Oh, God, where's the enemy? There he is. Never mind. Right. Well, we're, we're doing okay so far. I'm fairly happy with that. I think we... I had to have a look at some of the other weapons while we're on. Apologies if I sound a bit, a little bit nasal during this video. I got a cold while I was in Sweden. You can get incendiary rounds on a machine gun. That sounds like fun. Slug rounds, EMP rounds, as well as crash rounds. You can actually do a lot of vehicle damage and structure damage with those. We're going to go with the incendiary rounds because that sounds like a lot of fun. And the pulse cannon will deal with the shields for us. Equipment-wise, we might want to look at something that isn't a grenade. So I'm going to grab myself a proximity pack and I'm going to start laying those around. And tool-wise, might grab a mortar, actually. I haven't tried these out yet. Crash mortar, napalm, and riot. Go for riot, I think. Okay. Let's rock and roll with this build, shall we? Spawn on one of my squad mates, if I can. There he is. And it locks on automatically. You can maneuver around if you like. Be careful when you're dropping down, by the way, because you can very easily maneuver yourself into anti-air, which doesn't tend to work out so well. Right. Now, dynamic combat, as I was telling you about before. It's like, what is the dynamic combat mission system? These are objectives that will appear throughout the game, and you will gain that objective, and the other team will gain an opposing objective. So you have to be kind of careful about that. Ow, my face. Or perhaps my back. There is no kill cam in this game. That's perhaps something they need to look into. Spawn on one of my squad mates. Off you go. Now, these DCMs, we have a couple, actually. I have an assassination mission right here to kill a very specific player. And also, I need to defend a control point. If you complete these, you gain victory points, so it makes things a little bit easier for your team. Worth doing, you get some good money from it as well. Apparently, setting the supply depot on fire doesn't work all that well. Now we're going to use on our... The problem with the lock-on feature is it only really works for bullet weapons. It doesn't work so well for other guns because they have a travel time. And I don't think I really want to be here, actually. I'm getting destroyed by about six of these guys. I'm going to free spawn somewhere a little safer. I think down here sounds like a good idea. There we go. I still have 1 minute 45 to kill N. Rufius. I'm not entirely sure where that guy is, but I'm sure we can find him. Short enough. There we go. Down, 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 down. Splat. It's staggered me an awful lot, which I'm not too happy with. There we go. Take him down. Once again, this sounds like a toy machine gun. I do wish they could do something about that. So it might be worth having a look at the, the sound assets for some of these guns are not exactly what I'd call great. Now. Deployable AA turret. Now, I have a couple of weapons, don't I? That is a detonation pack by the looks of it. Oh, sup! Yeah, not happy with that. Kill as many of them as I can. One down. Can I kill the other? Can I kill the other? It's a, it's a, forget that. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, well, it, it was a reasonable attempt, I feel. A reasonable attempt. So the mortars... Are what you would expect. A little bit of Wolfenstein enemy territory sort of mixed into this game. This is a hybrid of a lot of different titles. It's got a little bit of tribes in there. It's got a little bit of battlefield in there. It's got a little bit of Call of Duty uh, and obviously a little bit of Halo with the shield regeneration and things like that. But it's not really any of those games and that's what I kind of like about it. It does have a lot of originality and a lot of replayability as far as I can see in terms of the customization of your character and in terms of these dynamic combat objectives. Ah, smack. Yes, you can do that. And it is also... Awesome. Where did he go? Oh, wow. I said him flying. Come on. Oh, he oh, got his shield up just at the wrong time. Oh, well. I think I ate a rocket launcher in the face right there. I'm not a huge fan of the machine gun. Maybe it's just because I suck with it, but I'm going to have a look at some of the other weapons. What do we have available? There is a sniper rifle. Better check out how that is. There's actually frag rounds. Area of effect for that. Rapid fire modification. Tag rounds. Drains target energy, and it sensor tags the target. It does a lot of shield damage as well. Take rail rounds for that, and we could swatch this out for the missile launcher. Crash missiles, frag missiles, rapid fire missiles, frag missiles, obviously. It's a man's missile, folks, yes. Right, down we go. Now, we've got a couple of enemies down there that we can take. We're going to lose this particular mission, I think. Haven't managed to kill my target. Right, now... We've got an intel mission. Oh, dear. It's not... No, we got sniper right... Oh, God. I think the fact that you do die so fast and it does take maybe 10 or 15 seconds to get back into the field is... It, it's not the worst thing ever, but I, I would point it out perhaps as a little bit of a flaw. It's like, hey, I'm going to land and then instantly die. 
Oh, Claudius. He was the guy I was looking for earlier, wasn't he? There we go. Now he's dead. Oh, God. That's a stompy looking guy. Let's take him out. Ah, this thing does not fire all that quickly. Should have really gotten to cover there. Hmm, perhaps using a sniper rifle at close range is not the best idea. Right, this is basically a capture the flag. Retrieve the intel, deliver the intel. We're going to do that in 1 minute 43. We will gain money and we will gain victory points if we do that. So doing these combat missions is nice. It shakes things up. I think it's one of the best features of the multiplayer in this particular game. Dynamic combat missions is a great idea. It was in the first one. Stop moving slightly. Thank you. There we go. Unacceptable. Oh, look, a bunch of dudes. Yeah, let's stick with those dudes. They may help me not die. Ah, wonderful, wonderful rocket launchers. What would a game be without them? Oh, God. Sup? Just, just, just please die to the rocket launcher. That, that'll be awesome. Thank you. It's extremely nice of you. Okay, you can kill him. I'm all right with that. Go on, shield down. You cannot lock on with this, although you can at this range. I can't imagine it's all that effective, though. Now, I do have some detonation packs, if I remember correctly. It might be helpful to start using these a little bit. And I also have this crash mortar. I'm not really sure how you use this. Let's find out. Uh, okay, that is how you use the crash mortar, apparently. That's how you hurt your own guys with the crash mortar. Let's get in a good sniper position. I, I can see a lot of kill videos, like, oh, I snipe while flying through the air. You remember how the old disc launcher worked in tribes, things like that. I can see so many great montage videos using that. There's a lot more skill required to use the weapons in this game because of the ability to fly like that. Cool. There we go. Kill it. Kill oh, come on. Really? Ah! Jesus! Where the hell did you come from? Oh, Jesus. Where, where is he? Where is he? He's, he's over there, isn't he? Alright. Oh, I'm not happy with this. Not one bit. It's alright. They've left. How very nice of them. Detonation packs from the sky! Please hit at least one of them. Ah, ah! Oh, well. Could have been worse. I now have the money to show you something. I I really should try and deploy the Marauder tank, actually, because I haven't seen that. It's very expensive, if I remember correctly. I'm going to drop into the middle right here. I don't know. Are we winning? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We have 543 victory points to their 306. UI is good for monitoring exactly what's going on on the battlefield at any given time. This does remind me of the older school style PC games, and I'm very much a fan of that. This is not a simplified multiplayer experience. There is quite a lot of depth and complexity to it. Always a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, nice. One of my bot partners has deployed an Ares Assault Mech. Those things are kind of nasty. Now, one of the things I don't like is the way that this works. You know, this is the whole deployment thing. You see it right here? Oh, we, I think, can we deploy it? No, we need 180 to deploy more at a heavy tank. But, yeah, this is kind of sucky. They could have made a proper menu for this. I know this is probably consolified. I think for the PC version, a, a nice menu that could operate with the mouse would be great instead of scrolling through it by pressing a button for everything. That seems silly. I'm going to get myself my own Ares Assault Mech because these things are badass. And I'll show you exactly how they work. Right. Oh, hi. I think not. Oh, it looks like you can use the lock-on with the sniper, although... Good luck actually killing anyone with it, because your lock-on lasts for about a second and a half. Has been yes. Come on. I was never a particularly good sniper. Good enough, though. Oh, hi. It says mech on it, which means awesome. Stompy, stompy. Now, this thing has miniguns as well as a melee mode, which is very powerful. You can also use melee to eliminate enemy mechs, although that's a very touch-and-go thing. You will often die to a fatality canned animation if you engage a enemy mech in a melee fight. It's a little bit unpleasant, a little bit risky, a lot of damage done by the melee. This does not have a sprint mode. It doesn't have a jetpack. Oh, God. We also have a DCM as well. Prevent beacon usage over there. I'm fairly sure this is an airstrike mission. And they deploy a beacon. Then you've got to destroy the beacon before the airstrike comes down. It'll do a lot of damage to the area. And, of course, it will also gain them points, which is not a good thing. Miniguns. Everything is good with dual miniguns. Thank you. These things are very nasty, but they are easily taken out with anti-vehicle fire, as you might imagine. Always nice to have one. Minigun turrets do not do a lot of damage to them at all. Oh, the beacon, the beacon. Prevent the use of the beacon. Prevent the use of the beacon. Can I, can I kill? Can I stop it? Do I have to hack it? I probably have to hack this thing, don't I? Hide behind the vehicle. Where'd it go? 
Oh, oh, did I get it? Did I get it? I, I think I might have actually picked it up. There you go. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because enemy sucks. Bang. Hulk smash. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love the fact that they use the same animation over and over again. I think they could maybe add a, a couple of animations in there to make it not look like you're stomping around as the Incredible Hulk. I, I mean, that's okay. Don't get me wrong. It just looks a little silly after a while. Get over here. Come on. Have at it. Oh, yes. I love the mechs. Get a mech. Have a lot of fun in the mech. I think the bots are a little bit short on anti-vehicle weaponry, and they're paying for it. Bear in mind, it's fairly easy to swap out. If you know your opponent's team has a lot of mechs, you can easily swap out and get some anti-vehicle weaponry to bring them down. And they're quite pricey. It takes a lot of work to get a hold of one of these things. All right. Okay. Things are going well for Blue Team right now. Very happy with how things are going. I really am genuinely enjoying this in terms of a multiplayer game. It reminds me an awful lot of Battlefield 2 and Tribes and all of those older school PC multiplayer titles that had a little bit more beyond simply get lots of kills, get kill streak, drop kill streak on people, rinse and repeat. You know, that was actually f fixated on the game modes as opposed to being fixated on the weapon selection. That's a fault of Call of Duty, really. It's like, ooh, persistent gameplay, blah, blah, blah. When you think about it, the actual game is very, very simplistic. And the main hook of the game is persisting and leveling up and gaining access to all these different guns and screwing around with them. I'm not necessarily saying that that's wrong. You know, I think a lot of people enjoy that. I do. I forgot to say, I've got 50 hours clocked in Call of Duty Black Ops. So it's not like I could say that that's a bad thing. It's not. But... It is nice to have something that fixates on the complexity of the gameplay modes rather than the complexity of the persistent progression. Now, there are a lot of unlockable items in this game. I don't know if perhaps in this preview build I have everything or whether there's anything missing from this, but when I was doing the interview with them, they said, oh, there's going to be tons of unlockable modules and things like that. So there will be some persistence in this as well, but it is a much more complex game mode from the very start. And I think that's a very good thing indeed. PC gamers should be very happy to see this the way that it is. It is really, really promising looking title. Section 8 wasn't a bad title either, but it was released at full price and it had its own problems, whereas this, of course, is going to be $15 via digital distribution, which to me is like a you would be stupid not to buy it kind of price. It's like there's so little risk involved in paying $15 for a title of this caliber. It really is. Stop that bastard. Get over here. Get up the... Oh, yes! <laughs> you can do infantry executions. Wonderful. Now I'm going to shot by missiles, and I'm not all that happy with that. Yes, yes, I get the idea. My thing is about to explode. They're not a fan of me anymore. Well, I, I got my money's worth out of that, and now I've got the money from a Marauder tank. So we can deploy that and see exactly what happens. I want to deploy on one of my squad mates. Where's my squad? In the middle of there. That might be a little bit risky, but we'll go for it anyway. We're also doing... You might have noticed I've been kind of ignoring the DCMs in the corner right there. There's a recovery mission. We're trying to recover some wreckage, and it looks like we're probably going to fail that. We've got four out of eight, so I suppose that's reasonable, but I think we did fail nonetheless. Oh... You know, that would have been a perfect shot as well. Ruined by, well, not being able to see through walls. How dare they, folks? How dare they? I'm still trying to kind of figure out what the purpose behind the lock-on mode is. I mean, obviously, I know what it does. It's just like, why why do we have it? You know, what is it there for? Was it for consoles? Or is it just in there because they wanted to just give people a lock-on mode? Maybe. Um, maybe it's to designed to prevent frustration. No vertical clearance. Right. Oh, we have too many vehicles on the field right now. We cannot deploy that. How very upsetting. Please blow up some of our team's vehicles. I want to deploy a Marauder tank. Oh, yes. The sniper rifle is nice. I'm a fan of it. I am a fan. Stop shooting me. Not a fan of that. Okay. Uh, yes. All in all... My impressions of the multiplayer so far is that this is a cracking title for $15. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Though, I don't know. I don't know why they're putting a single player in it. I just, I don't, I don't get it. Because I played the single player in the video that I then was not allowed to show people. I was like, oh, well, this is really, really generic. So why do we have it? Why is it there? Why do people feel, why does a developer feel the need in a $15 game to actually have a single player mode. Why do you need that? On a full price title? Absolutely. Totally understand that. But I don't know. Maybe they're biting off a little bit more. They can chew that. I'd rather just fixate more on the multiplayer. Give us some more multiplayer stuff. Just can the single player entirely. It must be a waste of budget. At least it is in my opinion. I probably get a lot of people very rabid over that. It's like, oh, no, you know, you, you, how dare you say things like that? It's a terrible thing. 
everything should have a single player mode. I, I don't think it should, actually. I really, really don't. All right, let's not get shot by the minigun turret. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go and see if we can kill the VIP. Can I hit him with a missile launcher? I can, but this range kind of sucks for it. Oh, yeah, I have a sniper rifle. One, two, come on. Come on. Oh, not reloading now. What a terrible time. Uh, go on, take that damn shield down. He's taking so little sniper damage. Looks like he's a little difficult to kill. Oh, we have a mech to help us out. Come on, die. <laughs> How many missiles can the VIP take? Obviously, he has better... <laughs> Did the mortar kill him? No, it didn't. He's still alive. Come on. Yes, there we go. Excellent. They did not successfully escort the VIP. I had a feeling very silly as a direct result of that. Oh, I love the fact that you just get mechs to just stomp on people. Can I steal that mech? Uh, yes, I can. There we go. If you leave the mech, you can very easily grab it. Oh, it's got it's got barely any ammo on it. Oh, oh no, there we go. It's like ammunition reserve depleted. What? Was that in my other? I suppose it was one of, one of my others. Must be on one of the weapons that I had. There we go. Everything in there will die horribly. Did someone seriously use a mortar indoors? Really? <laughs> That's awesome. No other game allows you to do that. I'm happy with that. Come on. You cannot face the wrath. Yeah. I think all mechs should have wrestling moves, by the way. I think that would be an awesome thing to have. If you're in a mech, you should have wrestling moves. I didn't get... I'd say, let's get the hell out of here as it explodes. Reminds me of Battlefield 2 once again. Let's get out of the APC. Boom! I think not. Righty, righty, righty. Things are going well for us right now. I am happy with the situation. Let's see if we can deploy one of those Marauder tanks now that one of our mechs is down. I have $290. I can buy whatever the hell I please. There's also deployable sensors and minigun turrets, and you should use those liberally. You do get benefits, and you get assist points if you get kills with those deployables, so there is a reason for it. Right, Marauder tank. Can I get one? Please don't tell me we have limitations. Where can I put it? Oh, we still have vehicle limit. God damn teammates. Oh, well, never mind. Deal with it for the time being. I want to deploy a few more supply depot sensor arrays. Yeah. Yep, let's get one down there. Right, we need to use the beacon. Where do I need to be for this? Is that it? Is that it over there? Hmm. I don't know, actually. I don't know which direction it's asking me to go in. Is this the outpost? In the middle here? Mm, no, no idea, really. Not in the slightest. I am totally clueless as to where I'm supposed to go for this. Missile launcher is a practical weapon for close range combat. Why? Because I say so. Quake said it was. I believe Quake. It does feel like a really great battle. It's a shame we couldn't have 64 players. I remember the madness in battle. Oh, wow. that That's not friendly, is it? No, that is not, in fact, friendly at all. I have a crash mortar I think I could maybe use on that. I don't know how effective it would be. There uh, we go. Ow! 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 So tanks are kind of dangerous, it would seem. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I I'm just going to leave now. Or maybe not. Well... There you go, folks. I think that pretty much covers it, honestly. It is really awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. I really, really am. Looking forward to seeing it go to retail. The release price of this one be, will be $15. The actual time of release, we don't know yet. We have no idea. It's supposed to be quarter one, 2011. But there hasn't been an official announcement as the actual date. And it's sort of running to the end of March right now. So I'm not entirely convinced that it will be there in that time. But nonetheless, it's a great looking game. It, the price is right. There's a lot of originality and innovation here. So don't mistake it for a Halo clone because it certainly is not. Keep an eye out on it, folks. we released by TimeGate. should be on popular digital distribution platforms soon, I would hope. So please, by all means, keep an eye out. And hopefully this will be a great success. My name's been Total Biscuit. That was WTF is Section 8 Multiplayer. I'll see you next time.